started? Maybe. I love the energy. Welcome to tonight, uh, tonight's um, student recognition ceremony, the first one of 2020. So before each school board meeting, we recognize students who have uh, reached state level accomplishments. Tonight we will honor White Bear Lake Area High School fall musical students who received the award of Outstanding in the Hennepin Theater Trust Spotlight Program. So what you'll be receiving tonight is a certificate and the coveted bear pin. The only way you can get one of those pins is to be recognized by the school board. So um, th that is what you'll be receiving tonight. And now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Don Bosch, principal at South Campus, to start tonight's ceremony. Welcome, Mr. Bosch. Good evening, everybody. White Bear Lake Area High School has a strong tradition of a fall musical performer's breaking a leg. And this year's production of Aida has, was no exception. The following students were recognized with the honor of outstanding in the prestigious statewide spotlight program run by the Hennepin Tree Theater Trust. The following group of students received accolades of outstanding for their membership in the Pitt Orchestra. James Carney. Clara Cunningham. Devin Helms. It's not here. I will accept this award. <laughs> Patrick Hunter. <laughs> Garrett Jansen. Katie McLattery. Ryan Peterson. Matthew Springer. Hayden Staub. Catherine Twist. Matt Wyman. So next, the following students were honored with outstanding awards for their individual performances. Jackson Ogden for outstanding performance in a supporting role. Jordan Rodriguez, outstanding technical leadership stage manager. Josh Powell, outstanding performance in a leading role. Yes. And Nin Chai Nuk, outstanding performance in a leading role. <laughs> the following adults were also a vital part of the student's success. Kristen Chenard, Pitt Orchestra member. Yeah. Katie Altoff, Pitt Orchestra director. Yeah. Corinne Steffens, tech manager. Jeff Willie, technical director, is not here this evening. And last but not least, Wendy Suya, director. Congratulations, everybody. If we can have everybody come back for your picture, that would be great. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> 
So parents, if you'd like to take pictures, if you haven't already, please do so. So, parents and family members in the audience, please stand to be recognized as well, too. Thank you for all of your support. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, make sure you grab a cookie from the back of the room, please. Anybody here, please grab a um, cookie. So, thank you for coming out tonight. And again, congratulations. Have a good evening. The regular board meeting starts at 7. Independent School District 624 to order. Uh, before we get started, we need to, del to deliver the oath of office. So I would ask uh, Scott and Marge and Angela to step up front and we'll do that real quick. Of Independent School District 624. Of Independent School District 624. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. With that, I will ask for a roll call. Uh, a roll call, please. Arcand. Here. Beloyd. Here. Chapman. Here. Ellison. Here. Mullen. Here. Newmaster. Here. Thompson. Here. Please stand and remove your hats and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all okay so we have before us an agenda is there a motion to approve the agenda so, so moved. moved motion by mr chapman a second by miss beloy uh it, this will require we'll just all in favor of approving the agenda say aye aye aye, aye. opposed same sign agenda is approved Next is our uh, organization of the school board. Uh, every year we, uh, we elect our officers uh, to the school board. So I will start with asking for nominations of chair. Um, is there any nominations for chair? Mr. Chapman. I nominate Don Mullen uh, for chair of the school board. I accept that nomination. Is there any other nominations for chair? Any other nominations for chair? Any other nominations for chair? That being said, uh, with no one else, uh, I am elected chair of the board. I will now move on to vice chair. Ms. Bloy. I'd like to vote to, or nominate Kim Chapman for vice uh, chair. Kim Chapman has been nominated for vice chair. You accept, Kim? Yes. Yeah. Are there any other <laughs> nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Uh, Kim has been elected vice chair. Okay. I would now open it up for uh, nominations for clerk. Yeah. Mr. Chapman. I nominate uh, Jessica Ellison for clerk. I accept. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? 
Jessica, you've been elected clerk. I uh, would now open it up for treasurer. Mr. Chapman. And I nominate Deb Beloyd for the treasurer of the board. I accept. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Congratulations. Uh, you've been elected treasurer. We will now uh, move into the consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. A motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Uh, before we uh, call for a vote, I just want to thank every year or every month when we uh, do the consent agenda. This is our sundry items, our minutes, those sort of things. But uh, one thing that I'm very thankful for is the generosity of our community and this month is no different. Um, there's been a lot of gifts that were given to the students to support the students um, at our school district and just want to recognize and tell them thank you very much for all those community members that have done that. With that, uh, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay. Consent agenda passes. Um, now we are at the portion of our program, our meeting to uh, for public forum. Uh, we ask that if you want to address the school board that you fill out a white card. I did not receive any white cards. Is there anybody that would like to address the school board this evening? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to our first, excuse me one second. I can move my paper. Our first informational item, uh, C1, which is the overview and welcome to White Bear Week and updates uh, on registration information for 2020-2021. Ms. Fetty. Hi there. Uh, thank you, Chair Mullen and members of the school board. I'm here to give just a brief overview of the things that are happening in January for our Welcome to White Bear Month. Um, and many of them have, have happened and we're excited to give a report on them. Um, and so, as, as you know, families are obviously invited into our schools at any time to learn about our offerings, and um, January is a time set aside for those families who are looking for um, registration for the next year, um, which is, is crazy to think, but it's a really good planning place for us to be, and we're, we're uh, finishing up this year strong, but then already planning for next fall as well. So we'll start with the high school level. Um, our, both our South Campus and North Campus hosted um, the incoming ninth graders through 12th graders at Info Nights, and those took place um, last week. The, the same happened at our middle school level, incoming fifth grade families and those who are brand new to our district were also welcomed in last Thursday to learn about all of the great things happening at our middle school level. At elementary, each of our schools last week hosted tours and information sessions for our incoming families. And then events later on this year will also continue to welcome the new kindergarten families into that um, to meet the teachers and to check out the schools. And we're excited to welcome the class of 2033. Um, and you did hear that right, 2033, our incoming <laughs> kindergartners this <laughs> fall. Um, so of course, like I said, any families who who missed that or are looking for additional tours and information are absolutely always invited to um, contact our schools. The, the school listings are on the website and they're invited in. Uh, I'm going to continue to cover specifically some additional information and communication that we've done with our kindergarten families, incoming kindergarten families, um, because they are the biggest cohort coming in. Um, some of the processes that we've continued to do this year, um, we've had online enrollment, of course, which has been good, and we've streamlined that process a bit so that in our incoming families will do the, the kindergarten enrollment information, and then they'll do the online family update along with all of our families during the summertime again as well. So we'll have another checkpoint to ensure that the information continues to be correct. We also have, of course, done elementary experiences, postcards, I'm sorry, bookmarks, um, really giving our incoming kindergarten families an idea of not necessarily um, expectations, but things that they might be working with their child on between now and next fall when their, their kiddo comes into the kindergarten classroom. We've, of course, done printed elementary guides, continue to do that, and then our videos that highlight our elementary level, and we, of course, have done that for each of our levels, early childhood, elementary, middle school, and high school. 
some of the other exciting things that we've done um, is to continue to um, do something that we've done for the last, um, last year as well is the elementary experiences bookmark. We've done that in English and we've also done that in Spanish and Hmong and provided that right off the bat to all of our families in that incoming packet. Um, we've also had Spanish and Hmong information available on our district website for families who, um, who would like to read it in those two. Um, in those two languages. And then our videos all have Spanish captions as well. So the el enrollment video has that in addition to having Spanish captions on any of our district videos. And then we did add a home language question to our census form that is sent home when new families move into the area or when new babies are born. A census form is, is sent to them so we can continue to serve all of our families who need um, information in a way other than English in the future as well. Um, something, one last element that we've added that I'm especially excited for, um, because it really does welcome our new families really well, is um, after the enrollment process has happened, we're starting to send a you're in welcome letter um, and welcome packet from the principals. And of course I forgot the t-shirt. I'll run over it at the end when you have any questions at all. But um, so all of our incoming kindergarten students, after their enrollment is processed, they'll get a packet from their incoming principal with a note from them, um, a flyer that lists some additional opportunities to come in, whether it be for a, a parade or a carnival or something that's happening in the school during the spring, and then a t-shirt, of course, that says, I'm a bear. Um, that's a continuation of the onesies <coughs> that we send to brand new babies, the screen at three t-shirts that we do for three-year-olds, and then really welcoming them into White Bear Nation with, with a t-shirt that they can wear proudly um, when they come in the fall or before then. Um, so we're excited again to welcome the class of 2033. Now that I've covered the K-12, I'll quickly finish with an overview of our early childhood program. Opening for preschool comes up, um, will open next Tuesday on the 21st. Early childhood family education registration happens later this uh, spring. And then of course our screen at three, the screening process has registrations monthly throughout the year. Um, so our early childhood families are welcomed in throughout the year as well in that way. So in closing, again, we're excited to um, finish this year strong and then to start um, building the blocks for a really strong fall as well. And I'll right. let you think of questions while I run and get the shirt quickly. Thanks, Ms. Addy. So here we go. So it's a little, <laughs> there we go. Um, and so, yes, a size four, six um, will be sent to all of our little four and five year olds who are, and six year olds who are coming into, um, into kindergarten in the fall. So Perfect. thank you. Any questions? Questions for Ms. Fetty. So all of registration should be completed for all, for all of our students. Uh, is there a deadline with that? We absolutely, for, for staffing purposes, you know, the earlier in this spring that all, of our, um, that all of our incoming students are accounted for will help our principals to set up their staffing levels and stuff. Of course, we, we take registrations throughout the spring and the summer. Um, but if families know that they are intending to come to White Bear and, and join us, um, we would love to get them in the door and, and start welcoming, welcoming them sooner rather than later. All right. Thank you very much for the update. Thank you. We will now move to our next informational item, uh, C2, which is the superintendent's report. Dr. Kazmierczak. Thank you, Mr. Mullen, members of the board. Before tonight's meeting, we recognized the White Bear Lake Area High School Fall Musical students who received an outstanding honors in the Hennepin Theater Trust's Spotlight Program. Congratulations, students. The district is hosting the January Staff and Community Wellbeing Series session focused on helping our middle school girls become healthy, resilient, thriving young women at 7 p.m. this Thursday, January 16th in the District Center Community Room, which is this room right here. And please remember to dress warmly on these cold winter days. The White Bear Lake Area Educational Foundation through the closet has jackets, mittens, hats, and scarves available for district families in need. Should you know uh, of any families that could benefit from the generosity of our community, please contact the closet at uh, closet, here I'll, I'll spell this out, C-L-O-S-E-T-W-B-L-A-E-F at gmail.com. 
Members of our foundation and other volunteers will then contact the family and make confidential arrangements to help those who do not already have warm clothes. Those families who have cold weather items to donate are invited to contact the White Bear Lake Area Educational Foundation at 651-407-7696. All right, so our district uh, continues to be one of many experiencing a service outage uh, of fee pay. So I wanted to make an announcement here um, that would be broadcast. So fee pay is our online payment provider. Uh, fee pay continues to work through the issues, but the service is still not available. So district families cannot currently make online payments for meals, field trips, school events, or athletics. So if families need to make a payment, in the meantime, schools can accept cash or checks to apply to balances, including meal balances. We will provide email updates to families as we work through the issues with the fee pay online payment system. All right, it is important to remember the emergency school closing information in case there is a need for it. Um, don't worry, students, I don't think there's gonna be any need for emergency school closings this winter. We had too many last year, so. If winter weather is so severe that schools need to close, parents will also be alerted in three ways as soon as a decision is made. A school messenger phone message and email will be sent to all parents. Those who have opted in to receive text messages will be alerted in that way as well. A message will be posted on the district's homepage at www.isd624.org. And messages will be posted on the district's Facebook and Twitter pages. Always assume schools are open and in session unless you hear or see differently from an official district source. All right, and with that, we'll turn it over to, for our student liaison update. Hey. Welcome back everyone from winter break. I hope everyone got some much needed rest on their time off. Um, just remember in this winter weather students to park first next to the curb and then next to other already parked cars to make sure that everybody gets a parking spot. Um, and our, also our Bears had some really great games recently. Our boys basketball team beat our rival Zephyrs 68 to 65 last Saturday. Also, our boys' hockey team came back for a win against Stillwater in overtime with a score of 4-3 to three last Thursday. Our varsity gymnastics team took second in their invite this weekend at Farmington. Um, they had three girls place in the top five scores for all around. And the one-act play this year, Sleepless in Siena, debuts on January 31st with an additional show taking place on February 1st. So look out for more details on Showtime soon. Uh, next week is finals week, so good luck to all students in their test preparations, and go Bears! All right, thank you very much. Dr. Kazrachek, I just have a quick question. We're not the only ones uh, seeing the problems with the fee pay stuff? Uh, no, it's, um, it's the company-wide issue. So the, any, any district that's contracted with them is having the same issue. Okay. Yeah, so. All right, thank you. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're, we're doing everything we can our, on our end. So hopefully, I, I, we can't really give a timeline, but I mean, hopefully soon. We had hoped that it would have been fixed by now, but. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Any other questions for Dr. Kazmierczak? All right, we will then move into our first operational item, uh, and there are several, so we will move into our first one, E1, which is action on the resolution authorizing uh, the approval of the sale of general obligation school building bonds, series 2020A. Mr. Wall. Thank you, Chair Mullen, members of the board. Uh, on November 5th, voters approved the Building Our Future referendum for the uh, supporting the construction and improvement of school facilities. Since that time, we've been working with our financial advisors, municipal advisors uh, from Ellers Incorporated to prepare for the first bond sale. With us tonight is Shelby McQuay from Ellers Incorporated, and she's been walking alongside us this entire time, and she's going to explain the um, resolution and the pre-sale report. Uh -huh. Shelby. Welcome. Thank you, good evening. Um, first, congratulations on passing the referendum. I know you did a lot of work. There's a lot of time put into it. I thank you. I know most of you have met um, my kid who I uh, walked around with, but I have three kids at Badness and um, they'll benefit from all the, the new uh, facilities. So they're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, so thank you. So um, I'll just walk briefly through the pre-sale report. Um, there's a portion of the school building bonds that you're selling tonight, although you voted on um, to about three, or you voted on 300, we all voted on $326 million 
of uh, voter approved bonds. We're selling $250,000 million tonight. So um, I'll just walk briefly through the pre-sale report and then I can answer any questions regarding the, um, the resolution as well. So um, as part of the overall plan, it was about a 25 year funding plan, um, so, uh, kind of blended all together the three school building issues. So one was planned for 2020, one was planned for um, 2022, and one was planned for 2024. And I'll just sort of highlight the changes um, that we made as a result of the better interest rate environment that we're in now, relative to where you were when we we're submitting the review and comment schedules to the Department of Education and um, preparing the pre-election estimates. Uh, so tonight, again, I said $250 million will be um, this first issue. The purpose is listed there, so um, this will be a single, um, a single purpose for all the, the building bond issues, and it'll be spread over the, um, the term of the project. So the authority, of course, is granted to you by the voters, um, and then Chapter 475 is the authorizing statute, which allows you to issue general obligation bonds. Uh, the term of this particular bond, the $250 million, will be a 24-year, um, almost a 25-year bond. And um, like I had mentioned, in order to take a full advantage of the good interest rates now, um, the initial plan that we had gone in with uh, planned to sell $200 million now. Um, and then the remainder in 22 and 24. Uh, because interest rates are, are lower now, we're going to... Um, sell more bonds now up front um, and sell them over a longer period of time to lock in those later interest rates. So you're still generating, the plan is still the same over the full term or, or over all the bond issuances, but because you can lock in those later maturities, lock in a larger amount, that's a net savings overall in interest um, and interest savings to the taxpayers um, over the entire plan. Um, so these will, the interest will be due beginning February 1 of 2021. Um, so this, uh, this levy went on in Texas Payable in 2020 to make your first interest payment in, in February 1 of 21. Um, and then principal on the bonds will be due in 2021 through 2045. You'll have an opportunity to refund the bonds beginning um, in 2028. Um, and that should generate some savings at that time. Uh, the state credit enhancement program is a free program for um, all school districts that allows you essentially a, um, a little bit of bond insurance. So you'll have this bond insurance, we'll, um, you'll, sort of, you'll get both your underlying rating of the school district, uh, which is a great rating from S&P, and then you'll also get the state's AAA rating on top of that. So it's an insurance to the bondholders that they'll get paid. This results in better interest rates for school districts. So, um, Great there. So um, as part of the bond issuance, the districts will, district will go through another um, uh, bond rating process. Uh, and that will be Mr. Walden and Dr. Kazmierczak Kazmer will participate in that, represent the school board, answer any questions that SMP might have, and then they'll um, uh, produce another rating for, for the district and for this building bond, this building bond issuance. Uh, the basis of issuance is listed there. This is the only financing tool that is available to school districts um, that allows you to do all of the projects that you need to get done. Um, and it was the program that was communicated to the voters. There's an additional debt service levy that was communicated to the voters at the time. Um, and all of this, uh, uh, these planned issuances fit into the tax impact that was communicated at the time. On the day of sale, uh, Ellers will, un um, will solicit competitive bids, and then uh, bidders from all over the country will uh, submit their lowest, uh, their lowest proposal to you, and you'll award based on the lowest true interest cost. Um, part of the resolution tonight is that you will set an upper limit um, of 4.25%. Current interest rates are well below that, but it's just sort of an um, insurance to the board that you would not have to authorize or you can't authorize if the interest rate exceeds that. So you're insured um, a lower rate th than that. The premium pricing structure is the next uh, section listed there. And so in this current market environment, the, um, the underwriters are paying a premium or paying more than the face value of the bonds. That goes to offset any interest costs and can also be used to um, fund the program, uh, the, pro the project construction fund. 
uh, uh, and beginning at the top of page three, there's uh, we always review your existing debt. We do this twice a year um, with a report to you. Uh, and you have no other uh, debt right now that is available to be refunded. Both the continuing disclosure sections and the arbitrage monitoring just outline some of the, um, the requirements that you need to do in order to have tax exempt uh, debt out there. So you're required to disclose certain financial information annually and then um, uh, following up on any issuances, the IRS may, wants to ensure that you are not generating too much money or sp you just making sure that you're spending it um, as they'd anticipated. Uh, you'll also be able to invest the proceeds and any uh, earnings you'll be able to use towards the project fund. The other service providers are listed there. Um, and then at the top of page four is just a timeline of what you can see going forward. So we're here tonight just doing an overview. You'll authorize the parameters resolution to award the sale. Um, there's some uh, things that we'll need to go through, like a due diligence call and a conference with the rating agency. And then on February 13th, that will be the uh, sale of the bonds. And as part of the resolution tonight, you're authorizing the superintendent or the uh, assistant superintendent and a board officer to um, authorize the proposal from the underwriters. So, so the winning proposal with the lowest interest cost. And then on February 24th, we'll be back and um, present the results of the sale to you. The closing date is March 5th. That's the date that you will have uh, the funds available to you to begin investing and then um, to spend out of that whatever project costs come in. I'll just walk through um, just some of the schedules. These are some of the formats that you saw as part of the review and comment or prior to the election. So our pre-election estimates are the first column there. We'd anticipated a, um, the deposit to the construction fund at about 322. Um, so the issuance costs there or the total par amount is listed uh, for the 2020 issue of 250,000. So we're going to sort of um, plan to spend or plan to buy as much now as we possibly can. And then the remainder will be um, in the 2022 and 2024 issues. The debt plan is listed on uh, page six. So um, some just some changes that we've been able to update since the review and comment. Uh, I would just note that your tax base grew more than we had anticipated. So we had included a 4% growth in the uh, the tax value. Uh, you are, were Ramsey County updated that to um, preliminary numbers of about 7% growth in value. So that's a larger tax base to spread that um, that debt levy over. So uh, what that results in is just a um, uh, more capacity to pay some some principal up front. Uh, and then the facilities maintenance bond issues are included in this plan as well as the um, voter approved. So initially we were planning to spend 200 million or to issue 200 million. Right now 76 million in 2022, 50 million in 2024. Um, but that was able to um, get pushed up to, to lock in the, the lower interest rates. So you set your levy for this in, um, in December. This was not included in the TNTs, but it was on your final levy. So um, the taxes for this have started to, um, will be paid in May and October. Um, and then to, in order to make that first interest payment. So uh, on page seven is just the pictorial, which shows the series of bond issuances over time and the total plan to stay within the tax impact as approved by the voters. And the goal here really was to lock into the longer maturities and the lower interest rate, the higher amount of principal being paid now is to just lower the, the um, interest over time. Uh, in the review and comment, we had estimated debt levies for all of the voter approved issues at 547 million. The current estimate right now is at 505 million. So a savings of about $47 million just as a result of the lower interest rates now. Um, the debt service schedule is just listed on page eight. That's the semi-annual schedule that is paid out. Um, and then page nine is just a kind of a recognition of where we were when we were at pre-election and um, the review and comment. Uh, when you had to submit the review and comment, 
rates were higher, they've since dropped considerably and we're really updating the estimates from the time of review and comment to the time of now and hoping that holds or drops even a little more um, at the time of sale. So the um, parameters resolution just identifies that upper limit of the true interest cost and identifies the, um, the people who will sign for it. And then we'll be back to ratify the sale on February 24th. All right. Thank you. Mr. Wald, is there anything else that you had? Okay. Would ask uh, for a motion to approve the action or to approve the resolution as presented in the packet. A move. A motion by Mr. Arcan. Is there a second? Second by Dr. Newmaster. Any questions regarding the resolution or the action? Boy. So is the rate locked in now or is it not locked until March 5th? So we estimated for pre-sale, um, I think um, uh, 3.27 is what we're currently estimated given the updated interest rates, but the rate will actually be um, locked in on February 13th on the day of sale. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing and seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman absent. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. We will, next, we will now move to our next operational item, E2. Um, bear with me, there's a ton of paperwork here. It is the uh, 2020 school board operational procedures um, as presented in the packet. Um, there, uh, these are the uh, rules of order and the board agenda format for 2020. Um, there's a recommended action to approve them. Would ask for a motion to do so. So moved. Motion by Ms. Allison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Any questions regarding the action? The rules of order and the board format are presented in the packet. Seeing no discussion, uh, we're just going to do a roll call mm -hmm. just to voice. be safe. Oh, Is yeah. it a voice? Well, all those in favor of approving the action, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The action is approved. Uh, next on the agenda is E3, which is the school board members' compensation for 2020. Um, there is a recommended action to uh, recommend, the school board recommends to keep the same compensation levels uh, this year as last year. Uh, I would ask for a motion to approve the recommended action. A motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Bloy. Any discussion regarding the action? This having financial implications, we would need to do a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Bloyd? Aye. Chapman absent. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Next is the uh, operational item E4, which is the action on the regular and work study meeting schedule 2020-2021. Uh, Dr. Kasmerchek. Uh, yeah, it's pretty standard what we're used to. I will point out that in February, you'll see uh, February 24th, you'll see a special meeting at 530. That is for the purpose of uh, ratifying the, the sale of the bonds that uh, uh, as a full board that, uh, that Don and I would have uh, would have authorized back on February 13th. So so that's why you see that um, that one odd listing on on February 24th. But otherwise, I think it follows a similar pattern to what we've done before. So. All right. Uh, you uh, see the recommended action to approve the following resolution to be resolved uh, by the School Board of Independent School District 624 that the attached school board meeting calendar be approved and adopted for the 2020-2021 school year uh, and that pursuant to Minnesota statute 64544 the School Board of Independent School District 624 Two four uh, has determined uh, that Ind Indigenous People Day is not a legal holiday and therefore public business including school board and informational meetings may be transacted on that day. Correct? Mm -hmm. There is that recommended action. Is there a motion to approve it? So moved. Motion by Ms. Allison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Arcan. 
Any discussion regarding the recommended action? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. All right. We will now move to operational item E5, action on the um, official deposits for the school district funds and authorized bank account and signatures. Mr. Walt? Yes. Um, each year the board authorizes the bank accounts as official depositories as well as authorized signers on each account and the list of uh, banks that we do business with is in the board packet. And so we're recommending that the board uh, move to approve the authorized uh, official depositories as well as authorized si signers for each account. The, uh, you've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Beloy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Newmaster. Mm -hmm. uh, any discussion regarding the action? Hearing or seeing none, uh, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. All right. We will now move to operational item E6. Action on the annual resolution authorizing administration to contact for budgetary items, contract for budgetary items. Dr. Kazmercheck? Sure, I can take that one. So this is a, this is a, um, an item that we act upon uh, each January. We started this a couple of years ago. It just clearly um, defines the authority of administration and that uh, We've included the statutory change where the threshold went from 100,000 up to 175,000. So um, I think it's uh, fairly straightforward with when you read the recommended action, I think you'll, you'll, you'll follow along what, um, what this authorizes uh, Mr. Wald and myself to do up to a certain level. So uh, based on what's allowed by statute. So. Okay, I would ask for a motion to approve the recommended action. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ellison, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Arcan. Any discussion regarding the recommended action? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Next is E7, which is the action on the official publication for the school district for 2020. Dr. Kazmercheck? Just our, uh, our long relationship with the White Bear Press will continue as our, as our legal, our, our, our newspaper of um, legal standing. So I recommend approval. You, there's a recommended action before you to approve the White Bear Press as our publication. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. A motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Thompson. Um, this, any discussion regarding the action? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay, next is the, we'll move to E8, which is the appointment of the, of compliance officers. Uh, uh, Dr. Kazmercheck. Yep, so we are required to certify to the Minnesota Department of Ed that we're in compliance with federal laws and regulations and state laws and rules prohibiting discrimination. And part of, part of that is to designate um, compliance uh, officers as, as outlined here. So we have a District ADA 504 co coordinator, be Lisa Oren, District Human Rights Officer, Matthew Mons, and Title IX coordinator, Sarah Paul. You've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? Of the motion by Dr. Newmaster, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Arcan. Uh, any discussion regarding the recommended action? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay, we will now move to E9, which is the Local Education Agency Authorization. Dr. Kasprzak. Right, so each year you authorize uh, the superintendent to be the local education uh, agency representative for the purpose of reviewing and approving documents required for compliance to federal programs included in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act uh, for 2020. So, you've, uh, so you've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Ellison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Thompson. 
Uh, any discussion regarding the action? Hearing or seeing none, uh, this will require roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay. We will now move to E10, which is action on uh, legal designation of legal counsel. Dr. Kazmierczak. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Uh, so this... Um, Again, as an annual approval item, it designates uh, the legal counsel that we use. So Knutson, Flynn, and Deans, uh, that is uh, typically we use them for, th they're a bond counsel, for example. Um, they can do other, they're a full service um, firm as, as, as well. Radwick, Rozak, Maloney, uh, we've used them from time to time. And then Rupp, Anderson, Squires, and Waldsberger uh, is perhaps the one you're most familiar with. We, we work with Mick Waldsberger a fair amount. And then uh, and if there are others as needed, but we typically stick to these, uh, these particular firms. The re uh, recommended action also um, lists those who are approved or are, are authorized to contact legal counsel. So I, I won't read through that unless you would like me to, but it's, it's spelled out there. You've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. A motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Any discussion regarding the recommended action? Hearing or seeing none, uh, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. All right. We will now move to E11, which is the appointment of the representative for the uh, Equity Alliance Minnesota. Um, I would recommend that we, uh, we appoint Jessica Ellison to the White Bear Lake School Boards, as the White Bear Lake School Boards representative to the Equity Alliance Minnesota for 2020. Is there a motion to, uh, I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Um, any discussion regarding the motion? This will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. All right. Next is E12, which is the appointment of a representative for the Intermediate School District 916-916. Uh, um, there's a recommended action to appoint Kim Chapman as the White Bear Lake area Schools uh, representative to Intermediate School District 916 uh, School Board for 2020. I would make that motion. Second. And the second by Ms. Ellison. Is there any discussion regarding the motion? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay, next is E13, which is the approval of the 2020 Minnesota Pay Equity filing. Mr. Wald, is that you? Yeah, I'll step in for Mr. Mons today. He's Thank celebrating you. the birth of his child this, the other day, so he's probably burping a baby or something. Right? <laughs> Perfect. I, I feel like I, I won here. And, um, but he would tell you about the Local Pay Equity Act that every third year the school district is required uh, by statute to submit a pay equity report to the state and the re state we're required to use the December 31st data and submit the report by January 31st. The report uh, measures a number of items. One of them is gender, whether a position is dominated by male or female employees, whether uh, it, the report includes a minimum and maximum pay, how long it takes a person to get to a level of maximum payment and whether they get service credit longevity. Um, we, we are providing this data for every position um, in the school district and will be included in the state report. A summary of the report is included in the board packet and the HR department has run this data through, um, through some uh, uh, test ma materials that the state provides and they believe we're gonna be in full compliance again this time. But we need board to pass a resolution to submit the report and then We'll bring the report to you when it's returned by the state. Uh, you could expect that if there are, if there's anything identified in the report, and we don't expect that there will be, but if there were some things identified where we have some issues with pay equity, then we'd be working to resolve that and bring that to the board as well. So the recommendation is to approve the 2020 pay <coughs> equity report by passing the resolution inc included in the board packet. 
the resolution, whereas the Human Resources Department has prepared the filing of record, therefore be resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approve the 2020 Minnesota pay equity filing. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Allison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Arcan. Any discussion? Ms. Allison. I have a question. Mr. Wald, I'm not sure that this is something that Mr. Mons will have to answer, but will there be anything in the report that comes out that will show progress, our, our progress or how we're doing with gender pay equity over time? I mean, look, and without the context of what where we've been in the past, it's hard for me to... Yeah, I can't answer that. Okay. I could ask Mr. Mons to follow up with you on that. Yeah, that would be great. It would be really interesting to see how we have tracked with our gender pay equity in this district. Sure, sure. I'll bring that to his attention. Thank you. Dr. Newmaster. And I just had one question as I was reading through it. When it says that uh, Roman numeral one, general job class information, male classes, female classes, that doesn't imply, does it, that only a certain sex may apply it's just how many are in each what does that mean yeah that, that's another mr mon's question okay. Mm -hmm. okay all right other questions comments we don't limit application to gender so it's it's perhaps a historical you know a, a statewide historical um designation is probably how that's defined but we'll get a we'll get an answer for you mm -hmm. We certainly don't limit application to one gender or the other mm -hmm. for any position, so. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. All right. Um, and then uh, number E14, the tentative contract for 2019 2021 fiscal year with the white bear lake uh schools cabinet members mr ma uh, who's taking this dr kasbrzek um uh mr wall did did matt talk to you about the contracts okay um well um yeah well i guess i don't have any context to give you i th i think i'm trying to recall i think there was conversation in closed session generally about administrative Compensation, so I, I think we would we would go with that, and then we could uh, again we could follow up with you if need be. Okay, so there's a resol there's a resolution uh, that whereas the parties have reached a recommended salary values and insurance contributions, therefore be resolved that the school board of independent school district 624 approves the 2019-2021 salaries and insurance contributions for the cabinet members. Is there a motion to do so? We skipped the nutrition. Did I did I skip something? You got the oh, nutrition. Oh, please actually, I apologize. Let me back up because it's my bad on mine. The so before we do that, we need to go backwards to E14 to the 2019-2021 fiscal year White Bear Lake Schools Nutrition Association. So this one too, I, I don't know, again, if Mr. Uh, Wald has anything to add, I can tell you that it's within the parameters that we've discussed in closed session. So I, again, I think it's fairly straightforward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then the resolution was would be, whereas the White Bear Lake area, White Bear Lake Schools Nutrition Association members have ratified their contract, then it then be hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2019-2021 uh, agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Bloy, is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Thompson. Any discussion regarding the agreement? Seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Now we can go to 15, and I apologize again. Uh, tentative contract for 2019 2021 fiscal year with the White Bear Lake Schools cabinet members. Um, I will reread the resolution 
whereas the parties have reached a recommended salary values and insurance contribution, then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2019-2021 salaries and insurance contributions for cabinet members. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Ellison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Bloy. Uh, any discussion regarding the motion? I'm going to wait a couple seconds. <laughs> Hearing our seeing no discussion, this will require a roll call vote. Arcand? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay. E16. We're getting there. Hang in there, guys. Tentative agreement 2019-2021 uh, for the confidential uh, employees group. Um, yep. Dr. Kasperchek. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mullen uh, and members of the board. Once again, this would this would uh, have fallen within the parameters that have been shared with you during closed session, and I can certainly follow up with you again if, if you wish. But that, but this is within line um, with what was discussed. Okay, I will read the resolution. Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the July 1, 2019, June 30, 2021 contract, uh, whereas the confidential employees group have ratified the contract, then it be hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2019 2021 agreement and authorizes the chair and the clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Mr. Arcan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Any discussion regarding the resolution? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Arcan? Aye. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Okay. And last but not least, there are three policies uh, that are coming before the board for their second reading. Um, we will do them in one fell swoop. Uh, policy 532, uh, use of peace officers and crisis teams to remove students from school grounds. Policy 611, homeschooling. And policy 616, school district systems accountability. Um, is there a motion to approve these policies? So moved. Motion by Ms. Beloy. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Ms. Ellison. Any discussion regarding the policies? Okay. Ms. Thompson. Uh, just as someone new, I had a question uh, in regards to the uh, reference of students with IEPs. Can you tell us what page, please? Uh, page 532-2. Okay. And 532-3. Um, I guess I was reading through it and I'm just wondering if this policy is something that is only specified towards students with IEPs. Dr. Kasvertek. Or does it relate to all students? It relates to all students. Mm -hmm. Um, including a student who's uh, on an IEP. Okay. I was just, because I noticed that it seemed most of the language was tailored towards students with IEPs. I know Ms. Orn's not here. So there, yeah, Ms. Orn's not here. It, it calls out a student with an IEP as well because um, there, are, there are times when... Um, Things are perhaps done differently, but it's so the the if we just go back if we go back to the purpose, the purpose of the policy is to describe the appropriate use of peace officers and crisis teams to remove, if necessary, a student, including a student with an IEP, from school grounds. So it's a, it's any student, and and then it also lists um, uh, specific uh, language for students who are an individual individualized education plan. Um, so. We, um, it might be it might be helpful to know that so um, this is a revision and so uh, the the large gray areas where you see on the, on your printed out copy that is um, uh, that would be an um, and, and then and the, the strike through is was probably Mr. Chapman and uh, Ms. Ellison you were at the 
committee meeting, uh, MSBA make, makes recommendations for changes, and so we typically follow uh, MSBA recommendations, and so this is a, um, a model policy that has probably evolved somewhat over time, but it's generally in line with the Minnesota School Boards Association recommendation, and their lawyers come up with the language, and we typically okay. adopt that, so. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding the policies? Hearing or seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the policies, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. The policies are adopted. Okay, we are now at the portion of our meeting for board forum, uh, which gives the ability for school board members to talk about or tell us about any upcoming events, uh, anything they would like. Is there anything for board forum? Dr. Newmaster. Well, I would like to extend an invitation to the annual Korean Lunar New Year, which is being celebrated at North Campus on Saturday the 25th, which actually is real Lunar New Year this time. It's a movable holiday, and it's hosted by uh, the nonprofit Korean Cultural Association, and entertainment is provided by Chungmi Korean Dance and Drum. There's a lot of things going on. There will be a poster, I think, in your digital backpack. But what you should know is it's the same day as the Community Ed Bundle Up Bears event at North Campus where they're going to be freezing outside and skating. <laughs> so there's a nice, warm, free, exciting Korean drum program at 1 o'clock. So once your toes are frozen, come in, thaw out, and watch the show. It's free. And it's fun. And I think this is at least the 22nd year we've done it at North Campus. So we thank White Bear for being a good host to Lunar New Year. All right. Anything else under board form? Uh, Ms. Beloy. Um, I just wanted to say that the, uh, the White Bear Lake Area Education Foundation um, is looking for donations, specifically um, adult jackets and winter coats. So if anybody has any of those things to, to donate, you can contact the foundation. Um, also, the, the uh, Education Foundation is also looking for volunteers um, to work at the closet. Um, there's a couple different time periods, but they're each about two hours long, and they're looking for people that can do it once a month, uh, during some week during that month. So um, if there's an interest out there, contact the Education Foundation. All right. Anything else? Selson. I just wanted to extend a welcome to uh, Ms. Thompson and Mr. Arcand as our new school board members. So welcome. Thank you. Anything else? Don, may I ask a question? Of course. Um, just a point of clarification. So back on the reorganization of the school board, um, do you think we should take a, a motion on the full slate of candidates or given that there was only one nomination that we we're able to move forward. We have in the past and we haven't in the past, but if you feel if, uh, as the parliamentarian, if you feel that we should. Well, I'm not, but I wonder if that would be that would be appropriate. And I, I'll work on a motion right now. May I say it? And then if, if somebody would. <laughs> Please do. Okay. So I would, I would make a motion then that we um, approve the full slate of officers as, as nominated and, and selected earlier in the meeting. That, we, that would be Don Mullen as the chair, Kim Chapman as the vice chair, Jessica Ellison as clerk, and Deb Beloyed as treasurer. That would be the motion. You've heard the recommended action. Is there a, is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Thompson, I think got you for a little Fine. bit there. So is there any discussion regarding the recommended action? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The ayes have it. Motion passes. No, I'll you. sleep well. There you go. You. <laughs> Is there anything else under board form? <coughs> Hearing or seeing none, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I move to adjourn. Uh, I will second that. We are adjourned. Thank you. Who's, somebody's got to take that.